I can take these home, clean them up. And there's a nice one. There's a nice one right here. And it is 99 cents. So I'm gonna get four and I can can these when I go home. Welcome back to The Rustic Wife, I'm Alana. Today I'm in the kitchen and I'm gonna show you a couple of ways that I'm gonna preserve some fruit that I got at the grocery store on the discount rack. So I'm only not only gonna be saving money, but I'm gonna be using the scraps and I'm going to be filling my pantry shelves on a budget. So here are my pineapples. I got, like I said, I got them for 99 cents each. Regular price at this one particular grocery store is about $3 each. Um, other grocery stores, $5 each, and I thought, you know what, these ones are a little bit, you can see the tops are starting to dry out and wilt, but the fruit on the inside, it's nice and firm, and to me, this is when the fruit is at its sweetest. So I'm, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to wash the pineapples in some hot water and vinegar, and then I'll get to preparing. So this is what this one looks like on the inside. There, just a little bit of um, softening there but what I'll do is I'll put that in the juicer and the rest of it can be canned. When I'm cutting pineapple I use a serrated bread knife I just find it easier especially for the skin. I'm just going to cut these up into chunks, remove the core and remove the outer skin. I'm just going to cut just as close to the skin as I can so I don't waste a lot of fruit. And then I'm going to cut the core. I like to cut them up into chunks. About that size right there. Okay, I've got all my pineapple prepared. I have the pineapple chunks. I have the cores and some just some of the bad bits that maybe were, you know, had some bad spots on them. That's going to be juice. I have the skins, which I'm going to turn into a raw pineapple vinegar. I haven't done that before, but I'm going to try that. And then I just have the stems and the bottoms for the compost pile. Got my canning pot here. I also have a little rack that sits on the bottom of the canning pot. If you can see, there's a little just little legs right there. What it does is I put it in the bottom of the pot and it allows the jars to sit up off the bottom of the pot so that they're not resting right on the direct heat. I also have my canning jars. They have been washed and sterilized in the oven. I set the oven at 225 degrees. I left them in there for about half an hour. I have my rings and the lid inserts. They've been washed and dried as well. Over here I have my steam juice extractor. I will put the cores in there to extract juice from the cores. So the steam juice extractor has three parts to it. The bottom part is where you keep your water and you boil your water. The middle part has a hole in the middle almost like an angel food cake tube pan. The boiling water will push steam up through that angel food cake tube if you will into this next part, and this is where your fruit is. This next part is perforated, so once the fruit is softened from the steam, the juice will drip down through these, these perforations into this pot here, and that's where your juice will be, and it will come out this tube and into a jar. This little clip here, this is designed to go on the tube and clip it shut so that your juice doesn't run out all over the floor. So I'm going to use this for the cores to get some juice. I'm going to put the pineapple cores and bits in the juicer. And we will let that steam while I'm filling up the jars to can. You'll see I've got the clip pinching it shut, but I still like to put the holes in a jar because I've found that sometimes a bit of the juice gets through and can leak onto the floor. I found that out the hard way with grape juice. I've got the 
stove top set to maximum because I want that water to boil quite vigorously to create steam to soften that, that pineapple, those pineapple cores to create some juice. Before you fill your jars, make sure you check the outside of the glass rim. You don't want a chip or a crack because if you have a crack, that's going to crack your jar in the canner and you'll have fruit everywhere. It's really frustrating. But also you don't want a chip on there because that will ruin the seal. So you just take your fruit and pack it into your jars. I'm doing what they call a raw pack. That is where you take the raw fruit, pack it into your jars, and then you add a boiling liquid to the top to within a half inch headspace at the top of your jar. You can also do hot pack, which is you'll take your fruit and boil it into a liquid, a syrup, water, or pineapple juice for about 10 minutes. That helps take out some of the air that's in the fruit and it'll make it so that sometimes if you do a raw pack you may have some settling of the liquid because of the air and the top fruit may get a little discolored, but I usually do raw pack for all of my fruit and I don't seem to have a problem with it. I ended up with seven pint jars and I've got 10 cups of water and one cup of sugar in there. You can use pineapple juice, you can use a heavier syrup, you can, which means more sugar to water ratio. You can use just plain boiling water. So I'm just going to fill up this jar to within a half inch head space. So what I want to do is I want to take something thin and non-metallic and push it down the sides going to release some of the air bubbles that are in there. You want to get rid of most of the air bubbles. If you can see, see some of the bubbles going up there. So once you release the air bubbles from there, you want to readjust the liquid so it comes up to within a half inch headspace. Now you can see this right there. There's three lines on your jar. This top line represents a quarter inch headspace, the middle one a half inch headspace, and the bottom one one inch headspace. So you want to get it, your liquid up to about there. So we'll adjust that. So once you've got the liquid adjusted up to where you want it, proper headspace, you want to wipe off the top of your jar. You want to wipe that rim before you put the lid on. And then you want to put the lid on finger tight. You don't want it too loose, otherwise it'll allow water into your jar from the canner. You don't want it too tight either. So you just want it just a little bit tighter than finger tight. So there we go, we're going to put that in the canner. You want to make sure the liquid that you're using is hot because you don't want to have cold fruit, cold liquid into a boiling hot water canner. And we'll just take this and we'll put it into the canner until we have the other jars done. Pineapple is a high acid fruit, so it's safe to can in a hot water bath canner. If it was a low acid fruit, you would need to pressure can it. I've got all my jars in my canner and you got to make sure that the water is at least one inch above the top of the lids. Put the lid on and I've got the stove top set to maximum. When that starts to boil, uh, a vigorous boil, set your timer for 10 minutes and then shut your heat off and take the lid off carefully, you don't want to get a steam burn, and let your jars sit for about five minutes in the hot water while the water settles down, and then we'll take them out. I did have some of the really light syrup left over. Uh, I'd rather have more than not enough when I'm in the middle of canning, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put that in the refrigerator and use that for a simple syrup to sweeten homemade lemonade or homemade juice or anything like that that you've got. So I shut the stove top off, and carefully remove the lid because of the steam and you're going to see what happened here. Remember I told you about checking your jars for cracks. This is what happens when you miss one. I checked them but obviously not well enough and this is what happens. So when people are afraid to do canning, they're afraid that their jars are going to blow up and blast the lid off of your canner but that doesn't happen. This happens which is just a real pain in my arse. So what I'll do is just take the other jars out, I'll put them on a towel, and then I'll have to wash them off in the morning after they've sealed. And this one I'll have to just clean up the glass. They'll, they'll just probably be one chunk of glass at the bottom. So there's the pineapple. So it's out of the canner. 
and here is the one that broke and like I said it's always just it doesn't shatter it's just the bottom that gives away and it it, it is always 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 one of these Bernardin jars these are the new Bernardin jars and they just don't make them like they used to I never have a problem with my older consumer mason jars or this style jar I, I've had these forever and it, whenever I have breakage it is always one of these Bernardin jars the new ones and you can tell I'm bitter I am bitter <laughs> so frustrating now instead of canning pineapple you can if you don't want to go to that trouble you can actually just buy discount pineapples and chop it all up and put it in freezer bags for smoothies I have a ton of it in the freezer that I just use for, for smoothies for the winter, but it's nice to have some canned pineapple on hand too. We're moving on to the fermented pineapple skin vinegar. I have never done this before, so I will be your guinea pig here. Um, so what I've got, I've got 10 cups of water with one cup of brown sugar dissolved into the water. I'm gonna pack the pineapple skins into these jars and then I'm going to fill it with water. And then we're just gonna put, <clears throat> excuse me, a clean cloth over top of that and let it sit in a dark place for two weeks I think it is and then add another two tablespoons of brown sugar and then another two weeks and then I think at that point a mother should form so we will see so I'm just going to pack these jars. Okay so I've got those filled basically to the top well over top of the fruit anyway and I'm just going to put clean cloth over the top and an elastic. So I'm gonna store those in a cool dark place, so a cupboard. I'll link the recipe below that I'm using from this website and you can try it yourself. Or maybe you can wait to see if my mess is up and you can decide for yourself. This is everything that I ended up with from four discount pineapples, which were 99 cents each. So just $4 for all the pineapples. I got six pints of pineapple tidbits. There were seven, but remember one broke in the canner. I almost have three quarters of a quart of pineapple juice. <clears throat> I used that steam extractor for my pineapple juice. If you have a press, I would use that for the cores because you'd probably get more juice out of it. And also I've got a bucket for um, my compost pile and two large jars of pineapple vinegar. Well, hopefully it'll be pineapple vinegar, so we'll see. And it's supposed to produce a mother as well. So I'm excited to see how that turns out. Another great way you can use the pineapple skins for something other than fermented vinegar, like I'm going to attempt, you can make a fermented Mexican drink. It's called tapache. And my friend Mindy and her husband Charles, they are from Life Goes North Alaskan Homestead. They've got a really great video up on their YouTube channel and they show how to make it. So I'm gonna leave that link right up here and you can go check it out. I figured it out and for this much pineapple, it would have been $18 to buy in the store. With the seventh pint, it would have been $21 plus my vinegar and my juice, and also some compost for $4. I'm gonna give some of the bits to the chickens, the rest will go in the compost pile. I hope you enjoyed today's video and you found those thrifty tips handy to fill up your pantry on a budget. And if you like the content of my channel, please consider subscribing and hit that like button and I'll see you next time.